<clears throat> I'm planning to speak today on a subject entitled Beyond Three Score Years and Ten. Now, I had, uh, I had been <clears throat> uh, for quite a number of years on the other side of Three Score Years and Ten, and uh, I am a little more than middle age, so uh, I'm going to try to, to help you. Now, you haven't reached the years, uh, many of you in here have not reached the years of three score years and ten. Uh, there are some in here that's heading mighty close to four score. And, uh, but what I want to get across to you, whether your life is three score years and ten, or one score year and ten, or two score years and ten, or even below that, that you'll pick up something today <clears throat> that'll help you to focus into a future. We are not past tense. We're present tense and future tense. Uh, and some people are tense about it. <clears throat> uh, you know, what, what we are doing today is going to affect our eternal existence. What we do today matters. What we say today matters. What we have done in our youth <clears throat> can affect us after the three score years and ten if it's not corrected and dealt with. Some people believe that they can just go their own way and do their own thing, but it won't work that way. <clears throat> Psalms, the 90th Psalm, beginning at verse 7. If you, if you listen to this, there's two sounds in here. The one of them is the sound of a defeated, pressed down <clears throat> person that has concluded that life is about gone. He says in verse 7, For we are consumed by thy anger, by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou set our iniquities before thee, our, sin, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and for reason of strength they be fourscore. Yet there is strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to the fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto, uh, to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. And I say amen to the last part of that. The first part sounds kind of bad. It just sounds kind of weary and troubled and... You know, sometimes people look at life like this. Well, you know, we've got today to live, and life is a struggle, and we're just all weak and uh, mortals of the dust, and uh, it's only by God's mercies we're not consumed. And uh, what in the world's wrong with feeling like you belong to heaven, <clears throat> and heaven belongs to you? What's wrong with the fact that I've been redeemed, therefore I ought to be away from the worm mentality and the undone business? If you're undone, get done. Uh, if, now I'm speaking to everybody in this building from three score years and ten under and above. I'm on this side of three score years and ten. I used to be on this side. Now I'm on this side. <laughs> but you know what? It's an excitement to me 
I have not always done everything I should have done in the bygone days and years. But that is not where I'm putting my focus. My focus is, now, Lord, teach me to number my days. Teach me how to use these days. When I get to the end of life, it can be said he was full of days. Days that were valuable, days that were useful, days that did something. You get up in the morning, and all of us have the same amount of time. We all have 24 hours in a day. But some people are able to use that time far more wisely than other people. But when you get on the other side of three score years and ten, I'm speaking about three score years and beyond, when you get on the other side, what we want to make sure that we have laid a good foundation that gives us a right to ask the Lord to extend our days. Because if we did it right on this side, then on the other side, <coughs> three score years and ten, I can appeal my case. So I need to finish the job that God has given me to do. <coughs> Now he says, so teach us to number our days and to apply our hearts into wisdom. Uh, some of us has not always been wise in the decisions we made. Uh, it hasn't always been the best. But I am seeing the value of getting away from anything that's inferior to hitting the superior to hitting the, the uh, quality of life where, you know, I know I can't live more than 100 years, uh, so I don't have too many more to go. So you see, the idea of it is between now and checkout time, uh, is the Lord going to be pleased with that time? Now, he wasn't always pleased with this back here, but I've already cr crossed that. Cross, C-R-O-S-S, -S. I took it to the cross. Jesus nailed it there, and he said, forget about that now. You press toward the mark of the bronze that I got. You forget that back there. You got a, a, a present tent and a future tense to look at. You're going to head out into a future. See, people say, well, what does it matter? It matters a whole lot. Does it matter how I live? Aiken thought he could hide. Uh, Aiken thought that he could hide a wedge of gold and Babylonian garments, and he got away with it. Everything's fine. Boy, we made it. He brought that home, stuck it in his tent. Everything's okay. Nobody knows anything about it, but there was an all-seeing eye watching him. And he told the prophet about it. He said, that man did something bad, and I'm calling Israel to attention. You'll never be able to win another battle till you get this thing corrected. Well, just one man, what does that make any difference? It made a whole lot of difference when they stoned all of them. <clears throat> Folks, it does matter. I am not agreeing with the king that says, well, if it doesn't happen in my day, it's all right, because if my children suffer for my iniquities, it won't be too bad. That's not my kind of lifestyle. I tell you, my children are not suffering for my iniquities. I told the Lord years ago, you take care of me. Don't take care of the children. Don't blame them for nothing. This is the place where I do it. Now, listen, you and I may not all be at uh, beyond three score years and ten, but some of you are. The hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. So if my hoary head, which obviously I do have, uh, is going to be valuable, then it has to be, I have to pursue righteousness. I have to make sure that I'm pursuing righteousness. That's Proverbs 16, 31. And Proverbs 20, 29 says, The glory of a young man is his strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head. 
So after the beauty has deceased, and then uh, uh, the gray hair takes over. <laughs> you know, folks, listen. It, it's a very important thing. I, I can't describe to you what happened to me when I hit three score years and dead. I want to live until I could hit that 70 years. I really wanted to. Because I faced death so many times, and I said the Bible says three score years and ten to parade and strength four score, and I've got to hit that thing. I tell you what, I got awake at 1210 the day I turned 70, and I mean I got me a fit. Boy, I said I made it. <laughs> Boy, I made it. You know, you say, well, that's crazy. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not judging you by me. Uh, you know, the, the thing of it is, it's the fact that I've reached that. Now I'm looking at the fact that they say I'm living on borrowed time. I don't know. I never borrowed anything like that. Uh, I'm not living on borrowed time. I'm given that time, not borrowing it. I have that time. Now what I need to do is make sure that from this point, the Lord is pleased to keep me here. Now, I could stay here and do like some others, never amount to nothing, but I, I, you might even live to be an old man. It doesn't make any difference. Though his years be a hundred years of age, I know it's going to be well with the fellow that lives right, the Bible says. So you see, we can't go with that. Now, uh, that hoary head or that gray hair, uh, whether it be gun barrel gray, or whether it be white, is uh, important. Uh, now, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, uh, the, but though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So uh, here we have this renewal. Uh, you get up in the morning, the, the old uh, body is starting to say, you know, it's kind of frustrating sometimes. I went outside. I was going to do something. I mean, I'm going to work. I'm feeling pretty good. While I'm feeling good, let's get some work done. And I mean, it wasn't three minutes until I was. The young man's glory is in his strength. The old man's in his gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the reason the Lord said to me, you're going to have to depend on other people to help you now. You helped other people, now it's time for them to help you. And you just can't do what you used to do. And uh, uh, he said, you're not young anymore. That, I laughed out loud with that when he told me I'm not young anymore. I got tickled. But you know, here, let me talk to you about this. It's my and your responsibility whether you're one year old and ten or under or one year old and ten or above or three score years and ten or above or four score years and ten or above. What we have to know is are we productive? Are we valuable? Does the Lord have a good reason to keep us here? Or are we just riding? I believe that it is my responsibility to make sure that I'm blessing and helping people. Psalms 92 and verse 12, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Those that, be, uh, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of the Lord. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. So if you see me getting fat, I'm flourishing. <laughs> you know, think about that. They're still bringing forth fruit in old age. This is the real thing, folks. They're bringing forth fruit in old age. When, you're, when you get feeble and you can't do the things you used to do, I'm talking about beyond three score years and ten, uh, if a reason of strength, they be four score. I want that strength so I can keep going, the strength. 
And, and what is so exciting to me, you know, is, is, is the Lord pleased with what I'm doing? I'm really excited about it because if, if I'm not doing it right, He's going to help me do it right. I just know Him. I know that if I go astray, He's going to drive me. And if I get to thinking stupid stuff about, well, I might as well just die. Nobody likes me anyway. I think he'd, that would insult the Lord. I'm not dying because somebody don't like me. I'm dying because I'm finished. That's the only way I'm planning to leave this world is finished. I wouldn't want somebody to promise to build me a house and, and got the thing uh, off, got the roof on and everything, and then walk off. Say, well, it's a house. Well, no, it's not a house. You don't have the walls finished. You don't have the lights in. Well, you got to understand, we're living in a different generation than what you were. That's the way we do God. We build it. Uh, except the Lord build a house, they labor in, uh, <laughs> the Lord build a house, they labor in vain, they to build it. Here we are. Listen, folks, it does matter whether you got windows in your house or not. If you don't believe it, go to Honduras. <laughs> Mosquitoes can come in through open windows. You see, this, this temple must be kept shiny, clean, pure, useful. At all times, it doesn't matter how you feel. It's got to be kept useful. I don't think Maxine is ashamed of her age. There's people who don't want you to know what their age is. But uh, I, Maxine's not ashamed of that. I mean, she's getting close to, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> you know what, folks? I think it's wonderful to think about shooting towards the end. Now, I've already come this far. Now I'm on the other side heading towards my everlasting home. And what I accomplish now is going to matter. What I accomplished in the past mattered too. But if you goofed up, get rid of the goof and start out anew. That's the miracle of the cross. The, the old mistakes, the old failures, uh, put them on the, the garbage patch and let's go. We are going to move forward. We repent of our sins. We move forward. Some of you may not have lived the best lives you should have lived. You messed up. Well, let's, let's complete that in and cut it off and say, done with that. We're going to move on into higher ground. Oh, I like that song. It says, I'm pressing on the upward way. New height I'm gaining every day. Though some may dwell where these abound. My, uh, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Folks, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm excited that I am old enough to be considered aging because I have no quitter in operation. I'm not interested in quitting. When the Lord says, I'm finished, then I say, I am too. Did I do all right? Don't want to finish till I'm done. You don't want to finish till you're done. You want to make sure when you come to the end of life that everything's all right. And that's exciting to me. I do not intend to cross over stormy Jordan. I do not expect to swim across the crocodile-infected river, reaching out my hand on the slimy other side, <laughs> get the hand of the Lord as He drags me up the bank. I know I'll live that kind of a life. On Jordan's stormy banks, I stand and cast a wishful eye. Go. Come on, let's go. I tell you, when, when Stephen's days ended, he wasn't an old man either. They was throwing pebbles at him. 
and rocks is hitting him, and he said, I see Jesus standing. Oh, that's all right. Standing ovation of heaven. And he never talked about, well, y'all pray for me as I go through this Jordan River. And he didn't sing, on Jordan stormy banks I stand and cast a wistful eye. No, he said, I see Jesus, glory to God, I'm leaving, goodbye. <laughs> see, the thing of it is, folks, you, you go and read about everybody else's goofs, why don't you think about something beside goofs? <laughs> Solomon didn't pass the test that was set before him. And it came to pass when Solomon was old, he hadn't prepared for old age that his wives turned his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. What happened? You know, I believe that was a great disappointment. What an awesome disappointment that was to Heavenly Father to give the man all that wisdom, wisdom superseding anything a human being had ever known, and now here he goofs. He keep marrying wives. If I was invited to that many weddings, I don't know if I'd go. Yeah, that's 700 wives. <clears throat> that wasn't even satisfying. She got himself 300 concubines. He'd probably have to be introduced to some of them and say, Are you my wife? I forgot I married you. Uh, <clears throat> glad to see. <clears throat> you see, friend, you and I want to be worthy to pass the test. We want to be worthy to have life extended. And if we want life extended, we will have to... Uh, now, I get careful on this thing. I don't want my life extended beyond what I need to have it extended. But I'm saying if I want my life extended, there are certain things I have to do. The Bible says that I call heaven and earth to rec record against you this day, that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Not only me, but my seed. I've got to make sure that my seed's going to be all right. I have to make sure that I'm not just living, but I have a blessing that's on me. That the blessing of the Lord is resting on me. It's going to come on my seed. It's going to stay there. See, sitting in this building right now, we have, uh, uh, what is, third generation? Sitting in this building is third generation. So with the third generation, that means that that uh, I've got to touch that seed. I make sure it's okay. And folks, listen. If we could ever get away from the past and stop thinking about all we should have done and all I didn't do, and say, so, okay, Lord, from this day forward. What do you want me to do? How are we going to do it? And let's do it. This is the excitement. It isn't all the goose you had and all the bad things. You may have to go back and clean some of them up. But let's go. The Bible also tells me if I want to uh, extend beyond the three score years and ten or live to be older, then uh, honor thy father and mother uh, as uh, as the Lord has commanded thee, that it, thy days may be prolonged. That's what it says there in Deuteronomy 5, 16, and Paul more or less quotes that. He said, Children, obey your parents and Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that, it, that thou wouldst live long on the earth, and it may be well with thee, that it may be well with thee, and thou may live long on the earth. Now, the idea of it is, folks, <clears throat> That honoring father and mother, whether or not how good they were or how bad they were, he didn't say honor the father and mother if they were good. There's respect that goes with that person who brought you into the world. Whether he or she is bad or not, 
there is a respect goes with it. I must honor that person. That is, after all, my father and my mother, no matter what they have done or doing or will do, there's still an honor that must go with them. They are my father and they are my mother. <clears throat> there's a fella that had a father that was going to leave the family, and a little boy laid on the doorstep and tried to beg his daddy not to leave. We need you, Dad. But alcohol was more important to him than the family. He stepped over his little boy, crying and pleading and begging. That same little boy grew up and watched his daddy go to a Christless grave. That little boy went out, if I have the story correctly, and Brother Kevin can help me if I don't. He went out to that Christless grave, and he fell down on that grave, and he pled and begged and pled God, Lord, my daddy went to hell. Let me keep somebody out of hell. I am going to fight hell from this day forward. I'm going to keep people out of this grave of Christlessness. Now, he's in a grave, but he finished his mark. He didn't care what his daddy was. He honored his daddy. He prayed for his daddy. He loved his daddy. He pled with his daddy. He begged his daddy to go with him to church. It didn't work. He honored his father because that's the way you do it. When David was old and full of days, he made Solomon his son king over Israel. You know how old he was? He was 70 years old. And the Bible said he was old and full of days. You know what I think that full of days means? He did something. David did something. He had those days filled. You know, recently, the Lord got on my case. I'll have to tell you all about this. I said, well, I'm not as old as my sister Catherine. Catherine's 84. I'm 70, and I'm starting to act like I'm getting old. So I can't get stuff done, and it's a little slower. And Everything went along fine. People trying to tell me, now, you're not old, you're not old, you know, and you're, 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 you're trying to make me live. Well, one of these days, I'm a dying or a rapturing or something. I don't know how I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out one way or the other. Someday. Now, I'm not ready to go now, so don't buy me a casket right now. I don't need it. <laughs> but, you know, I said, well, Lord, i tell you what. I said, <clears throat> uh, I've got brothers and sisters older than me, and they're getting along better than I am, I think. i tell you, i got a rebuke of my life, and I want to share this rebuke with you. He said the Bible clearly makes it plain that you ought to understand you can never compare yourself among yourselves. He said Paul was a weak man in body, but he wasn't a weak man in spirit. You cannot compare yourself with others. What you have done in life that's dragging your body down is completely different than what those people that's way older than you never had any of those responsibilities do. Your body is aged more than theirs, and you can't compare that. Then he brought me to David. He said when David was 70 years old, he was an old man. He had accomplished something. He was constantly doing something. He was writing psalms, and he was, he was uh, magnifying me, and he was bringing people together under a covering of righteousness, and his body started deteriorating because the body is not made uh, to last forever. And he said, you can't compare yourself with anybody else. An, an old man may be anywhere from 70 years old on up. It's, you can't compare that. So the idea of it is, folks, that uh, I see by what he said that I have some responsibility towards this body. If I want to live, I want to live good, he said, uh, that with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. 
So I've got to eat right. Uh, that means you got to. You can't eat sweets all the time. Now I'm much. I'm not much for eating sweets. Uh, you know that doesn't bother me a whole lot. But food does bother me. I uh, I love food. Good food. More food. But at the same time, there are certain things I say, no, we're not eating that now. You're not going to do that. You know, I got to live in this body. He didn't say give me another body now. <clears throat> he give me another one someday, but right now I'm going to take and see, I, I, I can do some things, but I can't keep on doing the wrong thing. You know, uh, well, anyway, I think you understand that. I got to watch what goes in this body. If I want, if I want this body to be useful to the Lord, I must be preserved spirit, soul, and body. This body needs a certain measure of exercise. It needs a certain measure of, of vitamins and minerals to get going. It, it, you don't just play games. You say, well, uh, you know, I'll live as long. Now, it may not be. You may not fulfill your days. See, there's the difference between fulfilling your days and having days. The last day that I'm on the earth, I want the Lord to say to me, I am finished with you. You are now ready to come with me. <laughs> Boy. Man. Boy, that would give me a shouting time. Oh, wait. Uh, I mean, think about that. I mean, I'm not planning to die with cancer. I'm not planning to die with a heart attack. I'm not planning to die with any other thing. I'm planning to gather up my feet in bed and say, Hey, wifey, come here. <laughs> I'm leaving you. I'll see you out the law. And give her a big kiss and a hug and go. You know, that brings me to another thing. <clears throat> you know, as you get older, we have to help each other more. My wife says, you don't need to help me this much, but I feel like I want to. I want to help her in the car. I, I want to fasten her seat belt, and it's easier for me to do it than her. And I want to bless her. So we, I want to help her. And then sometimes she has to help me. But you see the thing, I mean, taking, taking care of your partner, Working together, that's real fun. You know, we're together all by ourselves now, and we don't have to ask nobody what we can do. We, if we want to go out to eat, we just go out to eat. And if we want to laugh, we just laugh, and she has been really having that. My wife is getting tickled over everything. I get up in the morning and... All of a sudden, she's going, ha, 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 ha. And I say, what in the world is so funny now? And the poor woman uh, down, at, uh, uh, down at Washington, we was eating, and she was drinking something through this straw and sucking this stuff up. And I said something tickled her, and she got so tickled, she choked. And, uh, and then I tried to help her, and she goes, <laughs> Don't bother me now. I'm choking. <laughs> but I thought it could at least say something. But she wanted to take care of herself. She said, I was in pretty bad shape there. Got that old stuff. There. It wasn't coffee. I don't know what it was. She don't drink coffee. Um, tea. Well, anyway, I'll tell you what. You don't want this stuff down your lungs. So don't make your wife laugh when she's drinking. You see? <laughs> But you see, this is the, the fun part. Esther and I are just having so much fun together. She just said the other day, said, you know, we're just really having fun. It is fun. It, it's fun that it's, it's just us. And, oh, I was always glad for the children. I mean, you understand that. But, uh, but now it's us. We're getting old together. She's not I am. Uh, she's younger than I am. <laughs> Just this morning, he said, Daniel, look, I got a gray hair here. 
Well, I said, oh, yes, you want me to get a magnifying glass and look at the thing, you know? <laughs> She's a sweetie. You know, I, what I'm trying to tell you, that if you get older, there's somebody going to have to help you a little bit. There used to be some times I could carry my suitcases and do everything else, and now I just can't do what I used to do. But that's all right. Now I'll give somebody else a chance. I used to help other people. Now they're helping me. And uh, Esther had to really teach me to let them do it. <clears throat> Men was having heart trouble. She said, let me carry that. I said, Esther, no, you let me carry it. You can't handle it. I don't want to see you puffing and a blowing. So anyway, <clears throat> it's fun to live happy. It's fun to get 70 years old when you got something to live for and something to die for. I can still keep on to live it and enjoy it. I can just keep on going. I'm scheduled for, when is revival meetings scheduled for here? 2015? 2015. How many years? <laughs> 2015 is when we schedule revival meetings here. So, you know, the thing of it is, <clears throat> I can't sit around. I told the wife the other day, I said, please don't say no more to me about anybody's problems. I haven't heard anything but problems for the last while. I mean, all I've ever heard is people weeping over me and crying about something or the Lord correcting something or something. And I said, just leave me alone for a little bit. Don't tell me nothing bad. Until I get some good stuff going here. So then I have to think about something good instead of all the bad and what all is going to happen if and all this stuff. Well, I tell you what, I, I have hit a time in life which I look forward to. The next few years of my life, however many it may be, I have a goal in mind. That is to wake y'all up, shake y'all up, do anything I need to get you over there on the other side all right. I got a goal to feed you the gospel that, that calls for something better than just make it inside the gate of heaven. You don't want that. We got eternity to live. I'm going to spend eternity in heaven. I don't know how big God is because I don't think there's a limit to heaven. I don't think there's an end to heaven. I don't think you could go to the end of heaven and say, now this is the end. I don't think it's possible. I don't think heaven has an end to it. The upstairs up here, you look at the stars, there's no end to it. You just keep going for light years and billions of light years and still stars up there. What do you reckon heaven's like? i tell you a little bit about heaven. i got some sticking in me right now. I'm already enjoying heaven. I just haven't walked on the street of gold yet, but I'm enjoying heaven. I enjoy walking in the light. It's better walking in the light than in the dark. And I, I tell you what, folks, I'm not ready to just leave and let you all go. I'm going to make sure you go. You're going to have to go the right direction. My y'all are quiet. <laughs> you know, David did that which is right in the sight of the Lord, and God was pleased. I believe when David gave up the ghost, as you call it, I believe God was really pleased with this man. He had finished. Oh, yes, he said, he's a couple of goof-ups. He said, uh, oh, yes, he said, David did that was right in the sight of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that the Lord commanded him all the days of his life, save only in a matter of Uriah the Hittite. He goofed up. And God said, I still consider the man the man out of my own heart. This man is the man I've been looking for. His goofs, he cleaned up his goofs 
and now he's ready to go forth. And folks, that's what I'm saying to you today. Whether you're one year old, ten, two year old, and ten, three years old, and ten, or four score years and ten, let's get going. There's a job to be done. And I'm really excited about what the future holds. While I'm here, I want to please God more than I've ever pleased Him. While I'm here, I want to, if I have to, drag y'all into the other side. I'm in the dragon business now. <clears throat> you know, the Bible says Samuel, the Lord watched Samuel so close he wouldn't even let a... Uh, uh, did not let none of his words fall to the ground there in 1 Samuel 3.19. That's just pretty good. If I want to be a blessing, then I'm going to have to walk in the counsel of the godly and not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his light, uh, law does he meditate day and night. And then he goes on to talk about that he shall be as a tree planted by the river's water. So if I am going to have a future that's going to be successful and prosperous, and I, have, and I want to live, then I need to understand I cannot walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I have to make a decision. I'm not going to fool with that thing. You get that ungodly junk and try to bring it to me, I'm going to ignore it, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. That scorner is out there trying to make you believe that you're a crumb, a no good, no count person. You're all mixed up. Now, yeah, he tries to defame you and everything else. But I'll tell you, that scorner is one day going to face God. You need to skip out of that thing and get away from it. You don't sit in the skate of scornful. You don't listen to what he's got to say. You don't listen to his trash and his garbage and his lies and his filth and his dirt. He's as filthy and dirty as the devil himself. You leave him alone nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. All those things, I can't do it. I've got to stay away from it. Stand in the way of sinners. I'm not going to trip some sinner's way. I'm staying out of the way. I'm not going to walk in his way. I'm not going to do the things he's done. If I want to live long, I've got to stay away from that stuff. I don't have to do what the world's doing. I'm enjoying life without doing what the world's doing. I don't need to park in front of a wide, one-eyed monster and listen to all the garbage the world has to offer me. I don't have to listen to all their advertisement that says now the flu is coming down the road and you better get some of this flu medicine. And, of course, it's allergy season and the allergy is going to get you, boy, it'll get you. The other day I was just listening to the news, Fox News, and it said spring's here. This is the first day of spring. With it comes robins and singing birds and flowers and allergies. <laughs> I said yes, and allergies. What's that got to do with birds and flowers? You know what? We have to add something negative to all the positive. Because we're programmed that way. See, you've got to finish the job up, folks. We've got to finish this thing up right. We've got to finish our job right. Steps of good men are ordered by the Lord. That's what the Bible says. That's Psalms 37, verse 20. But the path of the just is the shining light. It shineth more and more into the perfect day. Just, just go on. I mean, this is all right. Sure, you're going to have days you're going to think. There's going to be days it's not going to all be a roses, and there's going to be a few thorns that'll stick you. Unless you've got thornless bushes. But you don't think about the thorns. I don't go around and say, now, that is a beautiful rose bush, but it has thorns. Or I don't go up to blackberries and say, boy, those blackberries are real good, but they got thorns. You know what we do? We just go in respite of the thorns and get the blackberries, the raspberries and everything else. And because, you see, folks, we, we have been programmed that we can't think too much on the positive the only time y'all think positive sometimes is when I talk about leaving 
And then everybody gets positive all of a sudden. You're still young. You're still young. You're still young. You want to keep me young? Stop bringing your problems. Uh, settle your problems between you and the Lord. Don't bring them on. Pile them on me. I think I'm going to retire from that. <laughs> I'll just turn that over to you. All the problems. You can take them. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if, you, if you don't have any problems, see Brother Callan. <laughs> if he can't handle getting the rare uh, veil back here. Now, you see here, folks, listen. It does make a difference when you get older, when things pile in on you. It does make a difference. It really does. When you've got decisions to make, it's not easy. You know, the church that ordained me, when you're 70 years old, you have to retire. I'll tell you when I'm planning to retire, if I live that long, 99, have one year to re uh, just one year to fish and hunt. And tr uh, not to hunt, <laughs> just one year to fish. I can just go fishing and enjoy life and praise the Lord while I'm fishing. Maybe even catch a world record. Who knows? And you know, I was thinking the other day, if David was old when he was 70, then when you're 80, you're very old. When you're 90, you're very, very old. And when you're 100, you're ancient. And I've got kin folks over a hundred. There's a number of my kin folks went a hundred and above. In fact, my great uncle preached when he's 96 years old. I don't plan to do that now, folks. I don't want to be here at 96. Is that all right? Yeah, sure, I got to get out of here for that. And furthermore, you might be glad I'm going by that time. The way I act. I want to get y'all straightened out. I want you to walk straight. I want you to get out there and get the job done. You see, if I want to live long, I want to ask the Lord to extend my days, then I must guard my tongue. Finally, brethren, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one to another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, railing for railing, but conjurized blessing. For he that would love life and see good days, let him reframe his tongue from speaking... Uh, Maybe his tongue is uh, his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. <clears throat> I tell you, one of the best compliments I had, a critic that criticized everything I do, nothing I do right. He had been more critical. I never seen a man so critical in my life about a guy. He just criticized me and criticized me and criticized me and criticized me. Everything was wrong. You know what this man put in public writing? He said, this is a man without guile. And I said, what a compliment. At least one thing he saw in me that was fit keeping. And he wrote it down for the public to read it. And I told my wife, I said, oh, we, you wouldn't have known he had that. See, in the back of some of these critics, they still know that they're fighting something. They want to fight you so that you don't come against them. But I'll tell you what, if your yea is always nay, and your nay is always, your nay is nay, and your yea is yea, I'll tell you what, you don't have to remember anything. If you said nay, you don't have to remember it. Next time it's still nay. If y'all know what nay is, it means no. See, the thing of it is, we've got to make some decisions. All you people in here that's one year old and ten, you got some decisions to make. All you people two years old and ten, you got some decisions to make. All you people seven, uh, three, uh, three score years and ten, you got some decisions to make. And some of you that's hitting almost four score, you're going to have to make a decision. My next goal is 80. If I hit 80, I hope I can jump that high. 
It's all right with me. I wouldn't care if the Lord told me I'm finished today as long as I'm finished. I am not leaving till I get finished. I don't have anything to go on. I want to finish my work. Jesus finished his work at 33. John the Baptist finished his work at probably about the same age. Maybe even earlier than that, probably. John probably wasn't even 30 yet. <clears throat> Maybe he might have been 30. But at any rate, I don't know. I didn't calculate it out. Somebody else may finish their work earlier. I don't know when mine's finished, but I do know this much. I'm alive today. And I have the privilege of talking to y'all. And I have a privilege of praying for y'all. And I have a privilege of appealing the case to y'all. You've got to get right. Paul said, I know that after my departure shall grievous wolves come in, not sparing the flock. But I'm going to tell you, as long as I'm here, they're not coming in. And I'm saying to y'all, we're not having any wolves in there as long as I'm here. And I hope that means Kevin, too, as long as he's here, no wolves is coming in. We're not going to have this wolfy business. And you know, I'll tell you what, folks. Paul said, I'm free from the blood of all men. I've cried out to y'all. I've shed tears, he said. And I'm leaving. I'm going. But I'll tell you, I'm free from the blood of all men. I've not uh, shunned to declare the whole gospel of Christ to you. If this was my last day, I can tell you all that I believe with all my heart I at least done what I needed to do. I've tried to tell you all. And I've tried to set an example. I haven't just tried to tell you all how to live. I've tried to set an example that you can follow me. And my wife is a witness to that. We're trying to be somebody that can be looked up to as being leaders that are not just mouthing things, but living it. Years ago, I sat down and penned these words. If I live prepared to die, I will die prepared to live. Then they wanted to make a plot to sell and hang on the walls and stuff, so I gave them rights to do that, but they changed it around. If we live prepared to die, we shall die prepared to live. There's a lot of homes in Maryland has that hanging on the wall. <clears throat> that's, that's my goal. If I live prepared to die, then when I die, I'm prepared to live. And that's all there is. That's good. See, this second death business is something that don't interest me at all. I don't have anything in that. I, I think I know why the Lord called me into the work I'm in. It's because he knew I was going to care about people. I'll tell you, folks, I spent a many a day praying for y'all. Just the other day, I said, everybody just leave me go. I'm in Washington. I got some things I got to take care of right now. I go into the room. And they're all by myself for hours. I'm appealing cases. Pleading. Appealing cases. It was hours went past before I finally got the breakthrough. It's all right. It's okay. It's what I'm here for. When I leave, my biggest problem is is somebody going to take over and have the same concern? I know we can, but will somebody have the same vision I've got? I want to get that vision across to y'all. I'm talking about on beyond three score years and ten. If the world tarry, you may get beyond that. And what's going to happen then? You may not make it. But I'll tell you what, if you get a hold of God and begin to say, okay, I've honored my father and mother, and I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord, and all that kind of thing, and get ready to let the Lord minister to you. Brother Kevin was telling him up there at a youth meeting, and he watched me come awfully close to death, and he saw me get out of it. He watched me do it. 
I can tell you, if I wouldn't face this, I could tell you. I mean, I could say it, but I don't know nothing about what I'm talking about. You know, folks, listen. You've seen me work this thing out. And I'm trying to tell you this so that you take the same pattern. Let's go do a job. Let's be available. Let's do the job. Is anybody saying amen to this? When I leave, you're still going to march on to Zion. And you're still going to be full of fire and power, whether that's 10 years from now or whenever it is. We're going to have the gospel moving on, right? Yeah. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity and privilege of speaking to these people this morning. I'm really excited about this thing. This just thrills me, Lord, that I have an opportunity yet to talk to these people. It's just really precious to me. These people are precious to me. Lord, I want everyone that's in this building and everyone that will hear any of this recording to be moved to be all that they can be. Lord, help us to get rid of the past and move forward with power and zeal and enthusiasm toward the mark. Dear Lord, if there's anyone in this building today that does not know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, help them to make that decision today to accept, not just say, yes, Jesus, come into my heart, but a change of life, a real life that is ordered of the Lord. Lord, help each of us to have our lives ordered by the Lord because then you can, you can delight in us. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory.